everyone. This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from the Department of Biosciences and Biomini, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course Enzyme Science and Technology. And so far, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, historical aspects of the development of the field of enzymology. Subsequent to that, we have also discussed about how you can be able to isolate the gene of your interest so that you can be able to clone that into a suitable vector and then you can be able to use that for uh, enzyme production and uh, while you are producing the enzyme you have different options in terms of the chromatography to purify the enzymes and once you have the purified enzyme you can be able to use that or you can actually be able to uh, test that enzyme to catalyzing the different types of reactions. So if you recall in the previous lecture we have discussed about the importance of the enzyme in uh, running the different types of metabolic pathways. So we have discussed about the carbohydrate metabolism, we have discussed about the uh, lipid metabolism and we have also discussed about the protein metabolisms. And all these metabolic pathways whether they are belonging to the catabolic pathway or the anabolic pathways are tightly run, controlled by the different types of enzymes. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about how the enzyme is interacting with the substrate and what are the different techniques you can be able to use to measure the interactions. So, uh, if you recall in the previous uh, module, we have discussed about that the enzyme are catalyzing the different types of reactions. These reactions are either falling into the catabolic reactions or the anabolic reactions. But if an enzyme wants to run the catabolic reactions or the anabolic reaction, it has to process the substrate. So what exactly the in both of these pathways, what the pro enzyme is doing is it is converting a substrate into a product right with the help of the enzyme. And uh, in this process, the enzyme is interacting with the substrate and enzyme is releasing the product. Now this enzyme substrate interaction when it occurs it actually modifies or it actually changes uh, many things in the in the enzyme substrates. So the first thing what happen is that when the enzyme is interacting with the substrate if you write this reaction you will going to say that it is actually going to form the enzyme substrate complex. Then this enzyme substrate complex is actually going to be get converted into the enzyme product complex. You can have the single end substrate or you can have multiple substrate whatever the way it uh, ultimately the you are going to have the enzyme substrate complex. This enzyme substrate complex is going to be get converted into the enzyme product complex and then it is actually going to be get converted into the enzyme plus product and this product is actually going to be released uh, from the uh, enzyme and that is how it is actually going to be produced. And this enzyme is actually going to return back to the original state and that is how it is actually going to be ready for processing the, another molecule of enzyme. So this means the enzyme when it interacts with the substrate it actually goes through the different types of uh, you know modifications or transitions. So let's see what are the different types of modifications it actually brought, right? So in the enzyme, uh, when it interacts with the substrate, uh, it actually changes uh, the uh, size, right? So because if you can imagine that the enzyme is uh, probably will be 40 kD, right? And the substrate could be of uh, maybe like 0.5 kD. So if it is like that, the ultimately it is going to be 45 kDa when the substrate is reacting. So it's actually going to change the size. Not only the size, it's actually going to change the hydrodynamic uh, surface area. Okay, So it's actually going to change the size in terms of increasing its uh, diameter. So it's actually going to change the hydrodynamic surface area. Uh, Apart from that, when the enzyme or substrate are interacting with each other, it is actually going to change the uh, surface chemistry. So, it is actually going to bring the uh, either the positive charge or it is actually going to mass. So, it actually can bring the uh, positive charges into the enzyme or it actually can bring the negative charges in the enzyme or it may sometime actually going to neutralize uh, the uh, 
the existing positive charges okay uh, apart from that the enzyme substrate interaction is also going to because when the enzyme and substrate is going to interact with each other it is actually going to form the enzyme substrate complex and this in this transition state uh, the electronic configuration of the enzyme is also going to be changed right so uh, it's going to have the uh, because when the substrate is binding it is actually going to have the unstable state so it's actually going to have the different types of uh, the interactions right and uh, so this is all about the how the substrate is reacting and interacting with the enzyme but the central question is that how and why the enzyme is processing the substrate and what are the different factors which are governing the interaction of the enzyme with the substrates so as we said you know in the past also that enzyme is made up of, of the protein a minor fraction of the enzyme is also made up of, of the rna which are called as the ribozymes and we are not dealing with the any type of inter discussion about this class of enzymes uh, protein is a polymer of amino acids and they are very specific towards the substrate and the product right so, as we said right just now that the enzyme is recognizing the substrate uh, due to the presence of amino acid it provides the specific environment for catalyzing the reaction with the different types of substrates and the substrate binds to a small pocket within the enzyme this pocket is known as the active site the molecular molecules produced by the reaction is called as a product right enzyme activity can be modulated by the non substrate molecules such as the allosteric molecules as well as the covalent modifications and how the enzyme substrate recognition works right because before the enzyme is going to interact with the substrate it has to recognize the substrate right so you can imagine that if this is a substrate and this is the enzyme it is actually going to react at a very small portion of the enzyme which is called as the active site so active site is very very active in terms of uh, recognizing the substrate and you can see that the substrate is nothing but the three dimensional structure right so it is actually going to have the some of the positive charges could have the hydrogen bonding donors it can have hydrogen bonding acceptors and all that so you can see that these are the hydrogen bonding uh, donors and acceptors right and you can have the positive charges you can have the uh, van der waal interactions and so on so first thing what it actually going to decide whether the enzyme is going to recognize the substrate is the geometric complementarity which means the 3d structure of the substrate is matching with the uh, 3d structure of the pocket what of the active site or not right and that is the basis of the lock and key model right uh, although some in some cases uh, uh, this is not true uh, but in majority of the cases the enzymes are actually having a th predefined three dimensional structure and that is going to be recognized as a substrate so you can imagine that uh, there are could be many types of substrate molecules which may be matching with one portion of this three dimensional structures and that's how it is actually going to recognize so a typical three dimensional structure will actually go and fit into this cavity but that is not enough it is actually should have the electronic complementarity also this means it should have the different types of groups so for example the positive is actually going to have the interaction with the negative and similarly the negative will have a interaction with the positive right so that's going to be also the, true that also should match because there there could be a possibility that you may have the similar kind of three dimensional structures but it may not map the interaction it may not map the electronic complementarity so for example in this case you have a hydrogen donor right in this case you have the hydrogen donor and this is actually the hydrogen acceptor so when this uh, substrate will fit into this particular cavity this hydrogen donor and this hydrogen acceptor are actually going to uh, complement to each other and that's how they are actually going to form a very strong bond similarly you have uh, you know the negative charges you have the positive charges so if you have positive charge it is actually going to meet with the negative charges right and uh, similarly you can have the hydrophobic interactions so you can have the hydrophobic patches on the substrate 
and that also will match it with the hydrophobic patches. So electronic complementity is very important because it is actually going to give you the affinity parameters. It's actually going to distinguish even the closely related molecules. For example, if we have, if we talk about the hexokinase and glucokinase, hexokinase has a very relaxed specificity, so it actually can recognize the different types of substrate, whereas the uh, glucokinase is only specific for the glucose, so it's only going to have the electronic complementity only for the glucose, not for the um, for the other sugar molecule. Whereas in the case of hexose uh, kinase, uh, it's going to have the electronic complementity for the main type of sugar molecules. And then we have the stereoscopy. So stereoscopy is also going to enzyme is going to uh, you know prefer. A particular type of stereoisomer in the substrate. So mostly the we are actually going to work with the L type of substrate rather than the D type of substrate because the L type of molecule or isomeric molecules are mostly being present. So this is what I have given in the next slide that uh, genomic ge geometric complementity the enzyme is actually binding site has a structural complementity to the substrate it needs to bind. Then we have the electronic complementity. So amino acids that are formed the active site uh, or the enzyme binding site are arranged to specifically interact and attract the substrate molecules. And then we have the stereoscopy. So the binding of the chiral substrate and the catalysis of the reaction is very highly specific uh, due to in large part of the inherent chirality of the L amino acid that comprise the enzymes. Now the big question comes that how the enzyme substrate uh, are interacting and what are different uh, modifications actually brought into the enzyme structures. So you can imagine that if an enzyme is there and it actually interacts with the substrate, it actually brings mod a lot of changes into the enzyme structure because when its enzyme is interacting with the enzyme structure, it is actually forming the uh, enzyme substrate complex. Right, and uh, the enzyme substrate complex is a unstable uh, state, so that's why it is actually going to get breakdown, and it is actually going to form the enzyme product because enzyme substrate complex is a very unstable uh, entity. So that's why the substrate is going to be get converted into products, and this is also unstable. So that's why ultimately the product is going to be released, and the enzyme, it is actually going to be reversed, right? It will actually go back to the, uh, and then it's going to be free, right? That's why so it's actually going to be interacting with the substrate molecule. Now, the big question comes that when the substrate is interacting with the enzyme, what are the different changes it actually brought into the enzyme structure? So, the first change, what you see is that it is converting the enzyme into a enzyme substrate complex. This means it is actually going to increase the size of the enzyme. So size of the enzyme, right? Uh, size in terms of the molecular weight, right? Which means uh, it actually going to increase the molecular weight and it is more relevant when you when the enzyme is interacting with a proteinaceous substrate. For example, if an enzyme is 40 kDa and it is interacting with another proteinaceous substrate, for example, with 10 kDa, then when it is actually going to form the enzyme substrate complex, but together it is going to be 50 kDa. Even for the small molecule also, for example, if the enzyme is 40 kDa and it is interacting with a substrate of 0.5 kDa, the change may not be very high, but it still be going to change the enzyme uh, molecular weight. Uh, size in terms of uh, also going to be change in the size of the hydrodynamic uh, surface area. So, which means it is actually going to increase the size of the enzyme. Let's say So it's going to be a lower size. It can actually be able to change the hydrodynamic surface area. It can make it small or it can be able to make it large. So it can actually make the enzyme a little unfolded. It can actually make the enzyme more compact.
So the first modification is that it actually can increase the size of the protein. So it actually can increase the molecular weight. It also can change the hydrodynamic surface area. The third thing is that enzyme is made up of, of so imagine that this is the enzyme which has the different types of active site, right? This ends up to groups, right? And it may have the positive groups, it may have negative groups and so on. So when the substrate is actually going to bind this site, right? For example, if this is a substrate which is actually going to bind and it has negative charges, it has positive charges and so on, it is actually going to change the electronic configuration of this enzyme. So it's actually going to mask the, uh, it is actually going to mask the functional groups, right? Or functional charge group or functional groups on the enzyme. So it's actually going to change the mask of the functional group. This means uh, it's actually going to change the surface chemistry. So the third modification is that it is actually going to change the surface chemistry of the enzyme and that could be in terms of the, uh, it may bring the additional positive charge, it can actually be able to bring the additional negative charges, it can actually bring the, uh, it can bring the hydrophobic uh, groups, right, because now what you see here is that this is an enzyme, earlier it was having a positive group, it has having negative groups. Now, when the substrate is binding, it is actually going to exhibit all the charge what is being present on the enzyme. So if an enzyme is, um, you know, hydrophilic on one side and the hydrophobic on the other side, you will can imagine that earlier the, the surface of the enzyme is uh, positively charged or negatively charged, it means it is polar in group. Uh, but once the enzyme is binding this particular substrate, it's maybe getting converted into a hydrophobic surface. So it actually can have the positive and so it actually can change the polarity of the molecule, right? It either can bring the positive charges or it can bring the negative charges or it can actually bring the hydrophobic groups. Apart from that, when the enzyme is interacting with the substrate, it also changes the energy level of the enzyme. So it's actually going to bring a lot of uh, changes in the free energy of the molecule, right? So it's actually going to change the free energy and all these uh, properties. So, so the first is it's going to change the size, so molecular weight is going to change the hydrodynamic surface area. So it's going to have the increase in size or decrease in size. The third is it's going to change the surface chemistry and the fourth, it is actually going to play with the free energy of the molecule. So it's actually going to have the modulation of the free energy as well. And all these properties can be studied with the help of the different types of different types of techniques. For example, with, uh, if you want to know whether the molecular weight is going up or down, you can be able to do like the electrophoresis, right? Uh, you, if, and you can also, if you are going to know whether the molecular weight is changing or not, you can actually be able to do the electrophoresis. You can also be able to do the gel filtration chromatography and, uh, and so on. Similarly, if you want to see whether the hydrodynamic surface area is changing or not, then you, what you can do is you can use the third technique and that is called as the gel filtration chromatography, right? So you can actually be able to use the chromatography techniques. Similarly, if you want to see the changes in the surface chemistry, then you can actually be able to choose, you can actually be able to use the uh, ion exchange chromatography because ion exchange is going to be uh, ion exchange chromatography or you can be able to use the uh, SPR or the surface plasma resonance, right? And when you are expecting that there will be a change in the free energy, you can be able to do the many change, many type of technique, but you can use what we are doing discuss in this particular course is the isothermal calorimetry because you can be able to measure the energy of the complex. You can be able to measure the energy of this free enzyme. And if there is a change, you can be able to say that the enzyme is interacting with the substrate. So uh, 
let's discuss how we can be able to exploit some of these techniques and you can be able to use for uh, studying the enzyme and substrate interactions. So, uh, enzyme substrate interaction, uh, as I said, you know, enzyme is going to interact with the substrate and it is actually going to use and form the enzyme substrate complex. And in this process, uh, it's going to have the increase in size. So, in, if you have the increase in molecular weight, you can be able to use the electrophoresis. Uh, so, electrophoresis is one technique that you can use to see whether there will be an increase in size or not, right. So, there will be an increase in size. So, size is one parameter, right. And uh, the second is uh, you are going to see whether the gel filtration chromatography is, uh, so gel filtration chromatography can be used, right. So, gel filtration chromatography can be used for measuring the hydrodynamic surface area, right. So, you can actually be able to see how much is the size of that ball, right. And then uh, third is you can actually be able to use the ion exchange chromatography uh, in case you want to expecting or you can actually be able to use the HIC in case you are expecting that there will be and you can also use the uh, SPR in case you are measuring a change in the surface chemistry of the molecule and the surface is interacting. And uh, the fourth is uh, you can also be able to measure with the help of the ITC and you can actually be able to measure the free energy of the molecule and you can be able to calculate what will be the change in delta G and that is how it is actually going to tell you whether the substrate is interacting with the enzyme or not. So, let us start with the first technique and the first technique is how you can be able to use the chromatography technique. Uh, in this particular uh, aspect, uh, you can also be able to use uh, because you know that when the enzyme and substrate are interacting with this enzyme and forming the enzyme substrate complex, it also going to bring the changes in terms of the spectroscopic uh, parameters, right. So, it is actually going to uh, bring the additional variations in terms of the pharmacophores. Because you know that uh, as we discussed right and when the enzyme is interacting with the substrate it is actually going to change the surface chemistry and that may actually be able to change the electronic configuration of the molecules and that can be mapped even by the spectroscopy. So, that is also going to be one of the technique what we are going to discuss. So, the first technique is this, second is this, third is ion exchange chromatography, fourth is ICT and the fifth is spectroscopy and the sixth is SPR. So, let us start with the chromatography. So, in the chromatography, uh, we can have the two chromatography technique because we want to measure the size and we can also be able to measure the uh, charge chemistry or the surface chemistry, right. So, we also can measure the charge. So, size we can measure with the help of the gel filtration chromatography and uh, charge we can actually be able to do with the ion exchange chromatography. So, let us start with the charge and how the charge can be used and exploit uh, with the help of the ion exchange chromatography to measure the uh, or to map the uh, enzyme substrate interactions. So, for explaining this I have taken an example of the enzyme which is interacting with DNA. So, you can imagine that in this case the enzyme is uh, having the positive charges and the DNA is having the negative charges and that is how they are interacting with each other. So, in this particular, so DNA enzyme interaction, so in this approach, the anion exchange matrix is incubated with the DNA and allow it to bind the DNA tightly. Now, the pure protein is passed through the DNA bound beads followed by the washing with the buffer to remove the unbound protein. Now, the DNA is eluted from the matrix either by adding the high salt or with the denaturating conditions. Now, the fractions are tested for the presence of DNA and protein and the eluted protein is analyzed in SDS page and DNA in the agarose. So, this technique what we are talking about is more of a qualitative technique 
qualitative techniques so that you can be able to say whether this particular enzyme is interacting with the DNA or not. You will not be able to measure or you will not be able to calculate the affinity parameter which means I am saying that you will not be able to measure the dissociation constant. So that constant uh, KD you will not be able to calculate. So what you are going to do is you are going to take the anion exchange matrix into a column and then you are going to pass through the DNA. So when you pass through the DNA, the bead is actually going to have the DNA molecule which is bound, right? Because the bead is positively charged, so it is actually going to bind the DNA molecule. So these are the DNA molecule, right? And when you are adding the enzyme, what the enzyme is going to do is it is actually going to have no affinity for the beads because enzyme is also positively charged, right? And you the and the bead is also positively charged so enzyme will not bind the beads but enzyme will bind the dna which is negatively charged so as a result the enzyme is going to bound to the and uh, uh, to the dna and then what you're going to do is you're going to elute with the high salt so in the high salt presence the dna is going to be eluted from the beads and that's how you are going to have the DNA protein complex which is going to be eluted. And when you are going to analyze this onto a SDS page, it is actually going to an agarose. It is actually going to give you the pattern of the protein and it's also going to give you the pattern of DNA. So when you have that, what you're going to see is that the pattern of elution of the protein is like this, right? So it is eluting and then you see this is actually eluting more in the center, right? Similarly, the DNA is also going to be elute in the same pattern, right? So it's going to be allow elute in the same pattern. And since their pattern is matching, that will say that the uh, protein is binding to the DNA. Now, as a control, you are also going to run the protein onto the these positively charged beads. Since the protein is already positively charged, it will not going to bind the column so this is positively charged protein which you are uh, adding into the anion exchange column uh, it will not going to bind and it will come out so that will be a control experiment to ensure that the protein itself is not binding to the matrix and that's how you are actually going to get a qualitative um, uh, test whether this particular enzyme is interacting with the dna or not okay so uh, once you are done with this, you can be able to use the more sophisticated techniques to measure the other kinds of kinetic parameters and you can be able to measure the other uh, like affinity parameters. Now let's move on to the gel uh, filtration chromatography. And uh, I hope that you still remember that the uh, what is the principle of gel filtration chromatography right so the gel filtration chromatography is basically uh, uh, separating the molecule based on the hydrodynamic surface area right which means it's going to measure how much is the uh, water is associated with the surface and this actually can be a very very robust tool to measure when the enzyme is interacting with the substrate it actually can bring the two different types of changes it actually can uh, increase the surface area or it actually can decrease the surface area so it actually can increase the surface area or actually can decrease the surface area which means when the enzyme is interacting with the substrate it can actually make the enzyme substrate complex, right? And that may have more uh, surface area. This means the enzyme is going to be get unfolded. Then only it actually can uh, have the larger surface area or in some cases, the, it's actually going to have the less surface area. And uh, when it's going to have less surface area, the enzyme is going to be get more folded or I will say it's going to acquire a compact uh, configuration. 
Now, how we can actually be able to um, study this? So, what we are going to do is we are going to prepare a column, right? So, we are going to prepare a gel filtration column, right? Uh, with the beads, right? And uh, you are going to analyze your sample, right? So, first, you are what you are going to do is you are going to analyze the enzyme, and uh, while you are analyzing this buffer what you are adding and you know, what you are using for equilibration can actually have the substrate right so bef so you can actually be able to do this experiment in two ways one without substrate and the other is plus substrate so first you can just analyze the enzyme without substrate and when you do the when you see the chromatogram the so chromatogram will be look like this so this is the volume, this is the absorbance at 280 nanometer, right? And initially you are going to just do without substrate, so okay? So when you do the without substrate, it's actually going to give you a peak like this, okay? Imagine that if this peak is around uh, 13, okay? So it's this is a peak at 13 uh, ml, okay? Now when you have changed the substrate so if it is in the presence of substrate so when you added the substrate it actually can go in both the direction okay so it actually can go either like this and can show you uh, this way or it actually can go in the reverse direction and it can actually be able to show you a peak in this direction okay so okay now the red curve what you see this is a this is a normal this is the enzyme right this is the enzyme without uh, substrate and this is the sub this is a substrate when it is making it more uh, towards this right so this is small surface area so this is actually going to be a small surface area and this is going to be large surface area so basically when the enzyme will actually will make the you know get unfolded it will move in this direction okay and when the enzyme is going to be more compact it is actually going to be in this direction so many substrates are uh, you know behaving the enzyme with a different way okay so it is very unpredictable it is very difficult to say whether the substrate will shift the uh, enzyme in right direction or whether it will shift the enzyme in the left in direction but majority of the substrate when they form the enzyme substrate complex they actually make the surface area more less so it actually makes the structure more compact rather than more unfolded but there are there are examples where it actually also unfolds the enzyme and it becomes more and more it becomes a uh, larger surface area uh, apart from this you also supposed to run the substrate alone because that also should tell you that whether the substrate is interacting or whether the where the substrate is eluting so if it's a substrate is eluting in a very very distant place next uh, has nothing to do with the enzyme then you are actually be very conform about this particular uh, experiments so if you if i recall again that you are actually going to have the first you are going to run the protein so this is the protein this is the protein plus substrate this is also protein plus substrate uh, it can go in either direction if the structure is going to be compact it will go in this direction if the structure will be less compact or i will say will acquire the larger surface area then it will actually go in this direction and by this you can be able to calculate the uh, surface area because the distribution coefficient has the relationship of the uh, uh, between the elution volume and the void volume so the molecular size of a protein is related to the shape of the molecule and the relationship between the molecular weight and the radius of gyration is that rg is uh, m to the power a where a is a constant and depends on the shape of the molecule so a is one 
which is for rod, A is 0.5 for the coil and A is 0.33 for the spherical molecules. So when you are trying to do this experiment, you have to do a, a parallel experiment to determine the molecular size, right? So this is just the qualitative test, right? You can also be able to very precisely be able to calculate the molecular sizes. So you can actually be what you're going to do is you are actually going to run the different uh, proteins of the different sizes. So you can actually have the larger protein and the smaller protein and all the six protein you can run. And then you are going to have the KD versus log molecular weight as the calibration curve. So you can actually be able to run the calibration curve and that calibration curve you can be able to use to calculate the molecular weight of the enzyme substrate complex, right? So in this case, the enzyme, uh, if you when you do the substrate interactions, its enzyme is actually going to move either in the left hand direction or the right hand directions. So this is all about the gel filtration chromatography, how you can be able to use the gel filtration chromatography for calculating the, uh, for, for monitoring the enzyme substrate interactions. And what we have said is that if the enzyme, if since the uh, gel filtration is working on the surface uh, area of the molecule you can be able to have the two possibilities when you have the enzyme enzyme is actually going to run like this when you have the sub so this is the enzyme and when you have the substrate it actually can move in this direction or the substrate can actually be able to move in this direction so this is the enzyme plus substrate uh, complexes so uh, either of these conditions you can be able to have the modification you can have the mapping whether the this is actually being done with the substrate because if this peak is true and suppose that you have taken the substrate as one millimolar right what you can do is you can increase the substrate concentration from one millimolar to two millimolar and then five millimolar and so on so when you do that it is actually going to keep shifting in this direction Ultimately, it is actually going to get saturated at one point and that's how it is actually going to give you the clear idea that the enzyme is, this shifting is because of the enzyme substrate interactions. So uh, this is all about the, how you can be able to use the chromatography to measure the enzyme substrate interactions. Uh, in our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss more about the how you can be able to use the other techniques like the spectroscopy techniques or the ITC or SPR and as well as the electrophoresis to measure or to monitor the enzyme substrate interactions. Thank you.